Well, good morning. Grandma Diane here. It's 11 o'clock. It's time for Grandma Diane's story time. Today's story is going to be called One Potato, Two Potato, and it's written by Cynthia DeFelice, and the pictures are by Andrea Uren. Looks like an interesting story for us to read on a Friday morning. One Potato, Two Potato. The end pages are a lovely brown. One Potato, Two Potato. It's published by Farr, Strauss, and Giroux in New York. One Potato, Two Potato. Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady lived alone on a bare, rocky hillside. Their children had grown up long ago and gone out into the great wide world to seek their fortunes. But Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady stayed behind in their cottage where they had little and shared everything. Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady were so poor they dug one potato from their little garden every day, called it breakfast, lunch, and supper, and considered themselves lucky to have it. Can you imagine? one potato a day for all three meals for both of them my goodness must be cold too look at their red noses and red cheeks that tells me it's kind of chilly where they live (laughs) well here they are they were so skinny they could sit side by side on one chair to eat their meal and it was a good thing too because one chair was all they had Mrs. O'Grady had only one hairpin. Together they had but one blanket full of holes and one raggedy coat, which they took turns wearing in the winter. So here's her, their one blanket full of holes, one raggedy coat, and here we can see the one hairpin she has right there in her hair. Of course, he doesn't share the hairpin with her, does he? <laughs> They had one candle which they never burned. Every evening as the sun went down and darkness was nigh, Mrs. O'Grady pretended to light the candle. And every morning when the sun rose and light filled their little house, she pretended to blow out the candle. They had one gold coin which they were saving for a rainy day and which they kept tucked under the straw of their mattress. Now Mr. O'Grady was a fine husband, as Mrs. O'Grady could have wanted, yet it was the wish of her heart to have a friend, someone with whom she could share recipes for boiled potatoes and sweet memories of how it felt to touch her newborn baby's downy heads. To be sure, Mrs. O'Grady was the finest wife Mr. O'Grady could imagine, yet he too longed for a friend, someone with whom he could discuss potato weevils and root rot. There they are. Here's pictures of their babies up here above the fireplace. And she's got little baby mittens or booties down there below. They must be lonely, huh? One day, Mr. O'Grady was out digging in the potato patch for their meal, as he did every day. To his dismay, he saw that he had come to the very last potato in the very last row of the garden. Hoping he had somehow missed one, he dug a wee bit deeper. What is this? It was harder than a potato, bigger than a potato, blacker than a potato. Why, it was a pot. Mr. O'Grady was quite surprised that he had never come across it before in that tiny garden, and he wanted to know the curious object. He wanted to show the curious object to his wife. Since he needed both hands to carry it, he put the last potato into the pot and started home. Mrs. O'Grady, come quickly, he called. Mrs. O'Grady rushed to the door. What have you got there, husband? Hmm, wow, that is a big pot, isn't it? My goodness, here she is in the doorway, and he's coming up the hill with this great big pot out of the garden. Well, said Mr. O'Grady, sitting the pot on the floor, it's a pot. Aye, so it is, said Mrs. O'Grady, but it must be too big for cooking. So far, it's come in handy for carrying our last potato home. Our last potato, exclaimed 
Saints have mercy. Saints have mercy. Whatever will we do? She leaned over the pot to reach for the potato. As she did, her hairpin fell out of her hair and into the pot. She paid it little attention, though for inside the pot were two potatoes. She held them up. Husband, she scolded, you oughtn't joke about such things. But I wasn't joking, said Mr. O'Grady, befuddled by the sight of the second potato. I put only one potato into the pot. Mrs. O'Grady smiled, and only one hair hairpin fell into the pot. I suppose that now I will find two. She reached into the pot, and her face grew pale. When she withdrew her hands, they held not one, but two hairpins, exactly alike. Husband, how can this be? She whispered. Here come the two hairpins out of the pot. How can this be? She whispered. Oh, my goodness, I think they've found something pretty special here. Mr. O'Grady took one of the hairpins and threw it into the pot. Quickly, he reached back in and pulled out two hairpins. Now I have three hairpins instead of one, Mrs. O'Grady said. Happily, she began arranging her hair. Mr. O'Grady said, Wife, think. Surely this pot is magic. If it made another potato and two more hairpins... What do you think would happen if we put in, he looked around the room, our candle? Mrs. O'Grady ran to get the candle and tossed it into the pot. Sure enough, she pulled out two candles, so exactly alike that one couldn't tell the one from the new. Now, next, Mr. O'Grady put their coat into the pot. Out came another coat, as raggedy and torn as the first. Then in went the blanket, and out came two blankets with holes in the exact same places. Mrs. O'Grady hugged her husband. We will be both warm this winter, she said. Oh, look how skinny they are. My goodness. Now they have two blankets and two candles and two coats. Three hairpins. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at this. Mr. O'Grady took the two potatoes, placed them in the pot, and pulled out four. He threw in the four potatoes and took out, how many would it take out? Eight, you're right. And when he put in the eight potatoes, 16 potatoes were waiting to be pulled from the pot. Soon the O'Grady's had enough potatoes for a feast. Mrs. O'Grady made herself a whole set of new hairpins and enough candles to light the nights through the darkest winter. Now see how she's got her hair all pinned up into a pretty hairdo? She needed hairpins to do that, didn't she? Mr. O'Grady tried to put the chair into the pot, but it didn't quite fit. No matter, he said, one chair has served us well for a long time. But Mrs. O'Grady, who was a clever woman, had been thinking. She went over to the mattress and with trembling fingers took out the gold coin. Husband, she said, do you suppose the pot's magic will work on this? Holding her breath, she tossed the coin into the pot. The one coin became two, then two became four, four became eight, eight became 16, and soon the floor was covered with bright gold coins. Mr. O'Grady put several of the coins into his pocket. Dear wife, I'm going to the village to buy you a new coat, a new blanket, and a new chair. Huh. They even look younger, don't they? <laughs> Mrs. O'Grady waved goodbye. And she put the potatoes into a sack. She gathered up the coins and placed them under the mattress. Then she went outside where she found a single flower growing in the bare and rocky hillside. Soon she had a bouquet of flowers just like it. Tired out from all the excitement, Mrs. O'Grady wrapped herself in both blankets and took a nap. She was awakened by her husband's cheerful whistle as he came through the door, his arms filled with packages. Here's her flowers bouquet that she made and here he comes in with all these packages. Look at, she has a sack of potatoes in the corner. Wow. Oh, did you see the, did you see the gold coins here under the mattress? 
Well, it's, uh, I guess, a good place to keep them. Eager to see what he brought, Mrs. O'Grady ran to meet him. She tripped and fell. Oh, no. Look at here. She's tripping on the blanket, and she fell. <gasps> Is she going to fall into the pot? And landed head first right in the pot. Help me out of here, husband, she cried. Packages flew through the air as, Mrs. as Mr. O'Grady raced over to the pot. There were his wife's skinny little legs sticking out of the top, kicking back and forth. <laughs> My goodness, that's quite a predicament to be in, isn't it? I'm not so sure I could get out myself. Uh-oh. Mrs. grabbed on tightly, pulled poor Mrs. Old old Mrs. O'Grady out of the pot and set her gently on the floor. But saints have mercy, now there were two more skinny little legs kicking back and forth. Without thinking, Mr. O'Grady reached into the pot, grabbed those skinny little legs, and pulled out another Mrs. O'Grady, so exactly like his wife that he could scarcely tell the difference. Oh dear, oh whoa, Mr. O'Grady moaned. One wife is all I ever wanted. And now he has two, doesn't he? He's holding his head not there, is he? <laughs> when the first Mrs. O'Grady had recovered from her surprise, she smiled and said, there's only one thing to be done. Mr. O'Grady pointed to the second Mrs. O'Grady, throw her back in. Not at all, said the first Mrs. O'Grady. Your husband must jump into the pot. You, husband, must jump into the pot yourself. Jump into the pot, but then there will be two of me as well. Quite so, said the first Mrs. O'Grady. Then we will have a wife for each husband and a husband for each wife. And best of all, he added happily, you will have a friend at last, and so will I. Mr. O'Grady thought for a moment. Then he took a deep breath, jumped headfirst into the pot. His worn leather boots stuck out on the top. Together... The two Mrs. O'Grady's grabbed onto the boots and pulled out Mr. O'Grady. <laughs> well, that's silly. Sure enough, now there were two more boots sticking out of the top. Both Mrs. O'Grady's grabbed onto those boots and pulled out another Mr. O'Grady, so like the first that they could scarcely tell the difference. <laughs> oh, my goodness sakes. Ah. Wow. The O'Grady's, all four of them, looked at one another. As they talked, they realized they had a great deal in common. Already they felt like the closest of friends. The first Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady agreed that the new Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady made a handsome couple indeed. Over a candlelight supper of two potatoes each, the Mrs. O'Grady's spoke happily of babies and booties while Mr. O'Grady's discussed potato weevils and root rot. Afterwards, the first Mrs. O'Grady wrapped her arms around the pot and said, Thank you. Then she said to the others, Surely we have something we could possibly want. Let us bury this wonderful pot for someone else to find. Hmm. They look pretty happy, don't they? All the Mr. and Mrs. O'Grady's. <laughs> So they did, and from that day forward, all of the O'Grady's lived happily together. They were, they like to say, simply beside themselves with joy. And that's the end of our story. Well, I wonder where that pot is buried, don't you? Hmm. Probably under the field. Where? Under the field. Under the field, Eli thinks. We'd have to find that field, wouldn't we? I wonder where it might be. And here's Mrs. O'Grady hugging the pot. I wonder if that's the first Mrs. O'Grady or the second Mrs. O'Grady. <laughs> Hard to tell. Probably the first, you think? It could be. So there we have it. One Potato, Two Potato by Cynthia DeFelice. And the pictures are by Andrea U. Rem, Wren. Excuse me. And now we have a mystery. We don't know where the pot is buried. You might find it someday when you're digging in your garden. Who knows? Well, today is Friday, so 
we uh, have the weekend ahead of us. It's supposed to be a nice weekend. And uh, today is supposed to be a nice day. So get outside, enjoy the fine weather. Find yourself a good book and a good spot and read, 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 read. Until we see you again on Monday, this is Grandma Diane saying bye-bye.